And uh, it was in the beginning days of her leaving. And uh, our world had just turned upside down. My whole family, her husband, her children, my Lauren, all of us. And we had very close family, always worked together in ministry. It was just so beyond. And uh, so it was the beginning days, and I, I felt like still maybe if I could just talk to Lindsay, she'd always listen to me. You know, she, we'd always had a good mother-daughter camaraderie, and always. And uh, so I'm thinking, and I'd invited her to the house, and, and I had it sort of planned in my mind already what I was going to say to her. And, and so I was just going to have the mother-daughter talk of the price that she was going to have to pay to do this this unthinkable thing. She had just separated. She had not filed for divorce yet at this point. She was just thinking about it. And she already let us know that she'd already separated. And, uh, and I, I, I couldn't even imagine that it would go any further than the fact that she had just separated. In my mind, I'm just thinking, no, she's going back. I mean, of course. And uh, so I'm sitting there with the table with her, and I'm just pouring my heart out to Lindsay. And she's sitting there looking at me, and she was hard and cold. And I was just, everything I could think of telling her, Lindsay, Lindsay, this is, there's no way this is God's will for your life, Lindsay. There's, you, Lindsay you keep, there's, you're about to drop off of a cliff. You're, you're heading straight toward the end of a cliff, Lindsay. This is going to destroy everything in your life if you do this. If you follow through with this, Lindsay, everything, everything in your life is going to be affected by this. So we get to the end. I talked and talked and talked, and she wasn't saying anything. She's sitting there staring. And so finally we get to the end of all things. And I said to her of the conversation, I get through. And honestly, I'm thinking that she's going to break and say, Mom, I see it. It's, I mean, obviously it was so clear. Surely she's going to see it. I thought she'd say, Mom, I see it. And you're right. I can work this out. So instead, I looked at Lindsay and I said, So Lindsay, what's your final answer? And she looked at me. And she tells me her final answer is she is finished, she's done, and she's getting a divorce. And it was just like this knife. I physically felt pain shoot through my body. And I just looked at her and said, Lindsay, I can't tell you how sad and hurt I feel to hear you say this. And I can't stand with you in this decision to support you in it because it's not the will of God for your life. She grabs her keys heads out that door, and slams it behind her. I got up, and I headed to the ramp by myself. And I stayed in that ramp. It had been hours. I stayed in a ball on the floor in the altar right in front of that step in that floor. And I was just calling on God with everything I knew how to pray in me. And it was like the word says when you don't know how to pray. It's just groans that cannot be uttered. And I'm laying in that floor, just groaning in the Holy Ghost, calling on my God. And suddenly I heard his voice. And I hear God. And he says, as clearly as you hear me, what was weird, I was talking out loud in prayer. And I hear a voice talking to me while words are coming out of my mouth. I'm hearing a voice speak to me. And this voice, as clear as you hear me, the voice said, you asked for her final answer. You didn't ask for mine. God speaks in all these unique ways. I just don't even have time to tell you about all the ways God speaks. I just wish I did. Can I just tell you one more time? See, I get all rabbit trailed, but I've got to go somewhere. Let me just tell you. Can I brag on God? I want you to learn. It's, you already know, but let me just tell you another way of beginning to watch for his word. He just loves to talk. He's talking so loud if we just, that's why we need to cut off those stupid phones and listen to what he has to say more. Because if you'll tap in to that frequency, you'll realize how clear he speaks. He will blow your mind. He will blow your He will speak to the point there is no doubt that you've heard from God. And you know what else about God? Just one word from God would be enough to carry you the rest of your life. Amen. If that word, if God just gave, if it came out of God's mouth, if the word was the, <laughs> it'd be enough to carry you forever. But the truth is about God. Why 
while one word would be enough, he'll give you as many words as you need. That's what was so sweet about him in those days with Lindsay. Oh, I just thought of another one. Let me just tell you this one. When Lindsay had first left, I was up early in the morning. I'll talk fast if you listen fast. I was up early in the morning. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. So she had just left, filed for divorce. It was awful. And I'm sitting up. It's early. I'm sitting on the couch, and I'm just praying by myself, and I'm just asking God, help me. God, please. And, and ding, my phone goes off like a text because God loves to text me. And so he, I picked up my phone, and I looked down, and while I'm praying, this word comes. And it was a text from a spiritual son who didn't know I was on the couch praying at that moment. And I looked down, and he says, felt to send you this. Isaiah 49, 25. The captive of the warrior will be released. The plunder of the tyrant will be retrieved. For I will fight those that fight you. And I will save your children. I fell on the floor. I was just overwhelmed that it, how clear it was. Well, that was that morning. By early afternoon, I was on my way to speak for a women's conference in Jackson, Mississippi. I was in the car. I get this phone call about Lindsay, and it was awful. Same day, a few hours later. And I'll be honest with you. In those days, it's like you can get a word, you're high as a kite. You can get a phone call, and you're just plummeting. And I was just so struggling, driving down the car and driving back to that car. And I can remember I'm looking out that window. It's probably six hours later from that word. And I'm just looking out the window thinking, God, please, God, please speak to me. Ding, my phone goes off. And I look down, pick up my phone. And it was a young lady who had no idea of anything that day, where I was, where I had nothing. I looked down felt to send you this. Isaiah 49, 25. The captive of the warrior will be released. The plunder of the tyrant. Come on. Same verse. Exactly. Same day. Few hours later. Y'all, that happened through the whole journey so many times. I cannot even begin to tell you. I couldn't even write about it all in the book. There were so many times that two times in the same day from random people, he would give me a word. Come on. What about God? What about God? Last one, last one. Just got to brag on him one more time. This was so sweet of him in the unique ways he speaks. So it was in September of 14. I'll never forget it. I was in the mill house where I love to pray on my property. My, my, it was my grandpa's farm. And I'm sitting in that old mill house and I'm just, I was, it was a hard day. I had called Pam, my intercessor, and she brought a friend, uh, Lee. Two women I trust fully. But they're not going to tell their vaults where I was and what I was dealing with. And I, to, to be honest with you, that day, I couldn't even pray. I was just so overwhelmed with what I was dealing with and what I was, had just heard about Lindsay. So I called them, and I just sat down in the mill house with them. They were here and there. I'm sitting there, and I said, y'all just pray. I'm just going to sit here, and y'all pray. So they're praying, 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 praying. So finally, Pam looks at me, and she goes, Karen, I'm sitting there like this, my head's down. She says, Karen, she says, do you see anything? I'm just, my mouth. she says, do you see a wall? And I said, yes, and I did. I do see a wall. I said, it's thick, it's huge, it's ancient, and Lindsay's behind it. Pam said, Karen, ask Jesus to give you a tool to bring that wall down. So I went exactly like this. I went, Jesus, give me a tool to bring the wall down. We waited. She said, do you see anything? And y'all, I saw it. And I went, I do see it. She said, what is he giving you? I said, he's giving me a feather, a white feather. And then I went, quote, I can quote it. I said, because he wants me to know how easy this is. Wow. 